No. Not yet. But soon. Hello there, graphic designers of the world. Welcome to another episode of Design Chef, the 60 minute design challenge that I do right here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot. I'm a freelance graphic designer and funny guy from right here in Australia. I go by Elliot as a cool guy on a lot of my socials. Maybe you've seen my design work before. My posts used to do really well on Instagram and now they don't. I was really happy with how last week's video turned out. I love the format and I'm ready to keep doing it. We're gonna do these for the weeks to come, baby. So strap in, cause Design Chef is here to stay. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, listen up. Design Chef runs like this. I give everyone a challenge. I complete the challenge in 60 minutes. You can complete the challenge at home in 60 minutes if you would like to as well. Then you can upload your work using hashtag design chef so that everyone participating can see your amazing work and we can all praise it. It's all about just having fun, not working for clients and forgetting about all of the immense pressure and stress that graphic designers endure and, and, and taking the stress of dealing with clients and people and taking that stress and, and moving it to the stress of only having 60 minutes to design. So it's like a condensed, condensed, it's an endurance test. Condensed endurance, condensed stress. Thank you to everyone who participated last week. I saw all of your submissions. They're all amazing. And I'm gonna feature some later in the video. So stick around for that. And also I do a live version of Design Chef over on my Twitch channel. So make sure you're following my Twitch channel in the link in bio if you wanna join the live version of Design Chef. And also if you miss those live versions due to time zones or whatever it may be, there is a recorded channel. So I'm going to upload all the recordings in the bios. I've got a second channel now. I'm a two channel YouTuber. I hope you've had a lovely week. I got a haircut last week and no one said anything about it yet. So. It's time to reveal today's challenge. Let's get right into it. Today's challenge is. It's the design chair challenge. Cause it's a chair instead of shit. It'll make sense. Let me just explain the actual challenge. Okay, I want you to make a poster dedicated to your favorite piece of furniture. Yeah, it can be something you own or not. It's a com completely up to, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Uh, have fun with it and experiment. Uh, I've written here, blah, blah, blah. Usually these challenges have longer explanations, but this one was quite easy to explain. So I'm just filling this text box with random copy so it looks better, thanks. Oh, I wrote this yesterday. You have 60 minutes to do it and submit it online using hashtag design chef on either Twitter or Instagram, or if you're in my Discord server, that you'll find on the Twitch stream. Uh, some people have been putting it in there and you can do that as well. I reckon that's a pretty cool challenge. I really like furniture. I very much enjoy that. Um, I have a dream piece of furniture in mind that I've always wanted to own. And I think I will be using that as the main inspiration. I think I'm ready to put 60 minutes on the clock and do some designing. That's right, everyone. It's time for Design Chef. So my original idea uh, for so a little bit of inspiration are uh, like these old Nike ads. I feel like everyone's kind of seen this style recently. Uh, it is everywhere on Instagram, this kind of like vintage shoe ad kind of thing. And I've never really done it personally. Uh, I'm not really a super big fan of the style, maybe because I just see so much of it. Um, but I've always wanted to try it. So I think that's what we're going to do today. But take this style and do it with furniture, which is a very... That's a genius move. And the piece of furniture that we're going to be designing is quite possibly the, the one piece of furniture that I've always wanted to own and one day hope to own. Um, and it is the roly poly chair, uh, which I think is just absolutely beautiful. The colors are uh, divine. Uh, there's so many different versions of this uh, and I've always wanted one, but they are ridiculously expensive. So maybe one day eh, when I become a... Um, a uh, quadrillionaire. I think we'll specifically do the yellow one because yellow is kind of like my color, you know. These chairs are also nice. This, this is just a replica one, but the um, the bold chair, this is a very nice chair as well. So if you needed a little bit of inspo, I reckon you could make a pretty pretty cool design out of this. So since we're gonna be playing a lot with like textures and stuff, I think it makes most sense to do this in Photoshop. Uh, I can hear the size already. Don't worry, I'm trying to block them out. Uh, I do know Illustrator, so it's fine. It's not like, you know, this time a year ago. I do know how to use Illustrator, okay? I just think it makes more sense 
to do it in Photoshop. So, so here we have our roly poly chair imported directly into Photoshop. I think what I'll do first is uh, kind of work on some text. Uh, now I know the whole like kind of the font that is used mainly on uh, these kind of posters is uh, Futura, I believe. That definitely feels right. I think that, I think I'm definitely on the right track here. So let's add another one um, just below it as well and chuck in the word chair. And there we go. It's starting to look, starting to shape up a bit nicely. I'll just line the H and the Y up there as I think that looks a little bit better. And we've already got something. We're already, we're already rocking with something. This alone, this alone looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly pleased. I also want to do some kind of like bottom text, I think too. Uh, it's nice at the top having just the headline Rolly Poly Chair. We can probably like make some room for a little bit of text above there as well. Um, but I think the main kind of structure is we're going to want a little bit of text up the top, Rolly Poly Chair, maybe a little bit of text down here with just some dates or something, maybe like when it was made. Uh, and then like some Apple Garamond light, like a nice sans serif down here potentially. Yeah, I think. We can kind of go away from that vintage style as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be entirely like, you know, replicating that style. So I think we can we can put some Elliot touches into it. A little bit of Elliot flair. Because mm. I got a lot of flair. I used to actually, my um, before I was like Elliot is a cool guy or Elliot Ulmer or anything like that, I was actually Eugene Designs. My tagline was all it takes is a little bit of flair. But who would have thought that all it would have really taken was a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, Foresight. To have not, to have just studied more. That probably would have been a better option. All right, let's get a little bit of text going down the top uh, here. I think I want something to say like, um, the best chair I will never own unless it's a replica. There we go. The best chair I will never own unless it's a replica. I think I'm going to stretch the roly poly and chair a little bit as well. And I might even add like a little bit of a stroke. I just don't think, oh, I just don't think they're uh, bold enough. Huh? I can't save the file. I'm actually running on, I think I'm running on the old, uh, I don't know if anyone else is having this issue. I'm running on like Adobe 2020, 2020, I think. I upgraded to the recent one and oh God, absolutely destroyed the program essentially. Um, so they bumped my price up the other day. Uh, so of course I, um, did something that you should obviously not do because it, it never works guys. This never works. I want to be very clear. This, this technique never works. Um, but I actually messaged the customer support team of Adobe and I said that I thought the price was too high. And then they, they told me that they were, they, they never do this for anyone else. That's right. You shouldn't do this on, you shouldn't do this yourself but they gave me 50% off for a year. So if you have an Adobe subscription, like don't do that, but you know, yeah. And then you can do that every year on the same day, as soon as it goes back up every single year. Did you know that? You don't know that. And to anyone from Adobe who's watching, hello, nice to meet you. Can I have Adobe for free? Let's try doing some tech stuff with Apple Garamond. Uh, I think we'll go with the Roly Poly for the header. I just need to tighten up the kerning a little bit. I think it's just like the, the key is a, a tightly kerned Apple Garamond light seems to give that like desired vintage effect that I think a lot of people are going for. This chair is going, make the leading a little bit tighter, go in and fix a few little things. Can you tell I used to have a career in advertising? I didn't. I'm not really too sure how I feel about the bottom just yet. I don't know if it's necessarily, if it's necessarily necessary. I do think it needs some kind of like big blocks of text though. That's one thing that I think it needs. So let's try and get some little patches going here. I gotta stop going on TikTok on, while filming this. this. That's really bad. How does it happen two weeks in a row? Okay, this looks really good. Let me just write a bunch of nonsense right here real quick. Okay, there we go. All the text is done. That's looking good, I think. I like the structure of this. It kind of looks like the front page of a magazine or something. Maybe that's the direction we could take this in. It also looks good without that block of text there too. Might be good to save the, the chair for that. Might also be good to put the chair like over the top of this. So I think it's now time, now that we've done all the text, um, to kind of like move on and 
and see what we can do with this chair. So I'm gonna keep a copy of it just because I think that it looks uh, good with the background and without the background. Um, I'm also just gonna go into select subject uh, and that should hopefully... Uh, now we're cooking with gas. That could be good. Just like the chair, you know, like really going hard on how cool the chair looks. Okay. I think the main thing that's going to make the chair work is like a slapping a bunch of textures on top of it. Now, I'm not very good with textures, so this will be interesting. But I think there's a few things... I own a few textures, right? I just want to kind of give it like a cool halftone effect, I guess. So I'm going to play around with a few things and we'll see. If, if I have any ideas, I'll let you know. If I have any te cool techniques, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. Okay, so the first thing I did here is I just took this, uh, I, I took the original chair, I added about 15% Gaussian blur, and then I added a bunch of noise, and then I thresholded it, uh, and it got us this, right, which is pretty cool, and then I did a screen effect, and then it just kind of like added a bunch of really cool looking noise onto the thing, which I think is a good start for when we want to add textures over the top of what we can do with the text as well i think let's finish i want to finish everything yeah okay okay i'm getting too ugh. slow down mate you've only got i uh, got 20 okay 20 minutes I, maybe i shouldn't slow down i want to do one or two little symbols here so let's open up illustrator and see if we can come up with anything the first one i think i just want to say like the publication or something maybe and we're just going to say like i am Elliot. This is something that I chuck in most of my posters now that I make. I got a little shape, a little symbol that I like to use in a lot of things. Let's use that. Okay, that's nice and simple. I think that'll look pretty cool. Um, just chucked kind of down there in the side. Um, let's also get something going in like brush script, I think. Um, and let's get this one just saying chairs. Add a stroke to that as well. And then we're just gonna kind of like uh, make it taller too. I don't like how the sea of brush strip. I don't like how the sea of brush brush script looks like a E, but I think it'll that'll have to do. We can do a little paintbrush thing and we can just go like, we can just do something weird. Make it way too detailed, like unnecessarily detailed. Why not add some shapes when you can? And then finally, we'll just add a, um, my version of the Nike tick. How about that as like a little, little send off, you know, I think that could be cute. So if we just, okay, <laughs> that's interesting. That's kind of cool. Instead of Nike, how about um, Ellie? I don't have much time to think. Okay, I think these three kind of look cool. I think they'll, I think they'll look good like stacked on top of each other. So um, the only one I'm kind of hesitant about is my own one. Funnily enough, I don't know if this symbol kind of like they feel different. You know, all of this kind of feels different. The only thing I'm kind of thinking is maybe if I fill this in black and then uh, take the font and make that like white. Let's go with that. Let's put the chairs one on top of that. Shrink them down, because I kind of imagine them just being literally this small, like, great. Okay, that looks better. That lo all looks nice and even now. Um, and this is this is cool. I think this is very cool. These are, these are so small. Um, and I'm kind of like completely okay with that. Okay, so just seeing it with the chair makes it feel a lot better. And I'm actually kind of happy with like the, the empty space here. I think that's a, a nice little thing. It kind of works because the, the, the one of the legs of the chair is kind of, blends in there for a little bit. I also just added this for YouTube 2022 little bit of type there, um, just cause I think it shapes it all nicely. If we center that in the middle, we might even shrink it down a little bit more, um, just so it's more like just a little like line almost. There we go. I think that looks better if we separate it into two like that. It kind of splits it up nicely. We're doing a lot of splitting up, so it works, works good like that. Now I guess we can do some like full on kind of cool texture stuff. Uh, I don't think, I think I want the roly poly to go above the chair. I think that makes the most sense. Something like that, that looks good. Um, and I don't think we need to add this. Uh, oh, I mean, there might just be a bit, I mean, it looks good with the chair in front of it. That's the issue. I think it looks good with the chair in front of it, but we do want this one to be red. I think if we're going to have it, it should stand out. That doesn't look nice though. Hmm. Kind of cool. I really like that. I like that a lot. Just duplicating the the original blocks of text going up. Yeah, I think that looks really cool. That's a winner. That's a winner in my opinion. Seven minutes left, and now all that's left to do is kind of just uh, text just work. Really, I think. Um, so we can kind of do some fun little stuff here. That's what I'll do. I'll separate it. So I'll have the type layer, and then we'll have the chair layer. That sounds like a good idea. Wow, that looks cool. 
Why does that look so cool? So I've just got a simple newspaper texture that I'm gonna slap on top of this here. Multiply, I think. There we go. Okay, that's looking really good. Those textures are popping. Look at that. That's some good depth. The link in bio if you would like the pack. Let's also add some of this nice ink bleed as well. Uh, and if we just chuck that on light and on screen, I believe that should just give us the a nice little effect again, going over the kind of like the darker areas too. We can lower the opacity a little bit. I also just want to see it, what will happen if I do a tiny, the tiniest bit of blur, like a one or like a three maybe, and then add the tiniest bit of noise as well, like a, like a five. Uh, and then we do a little adjustment threshold and just pump the threshold too. That's probably a bit too much. It looks good on the heading, but it looks absolutely terrible down there. I should just do this as a smart object. I think that'd be the smartest thing to do, would you believe? But I can't be bothered and we don't have, but we don't have time. There we go. That's looking the way I want it to look. Now we have just a little bit of like a rough, more refined edge, I think more of like a ink bleedier edge like it looks more set into the the paper which is nice so here's our chair it's looking cool what's going on there the chair is just the main thing i think we can definitely do a little bit more with it um maybe just bring out that yellow a bit more and and just pack it with a little bit more noise we can also do a lighter color blending mode on this top layer we used to have it on screen but i think it looks cooler if it's lighter color because we get these nice grays kind of popping in and it just once again is that bolder kind of touch change the levels a bit of the main chair get a little bit brighter once again and then let's just merge everything together like this uh pump the saturation a little bit hello look at that glow oh my lord what are they this is this is so annoying I am proud to reveal my final design for the design chair challenge. Introducing the Roly Poly Poster. Well, 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 it. What a round two. That was one of the, that's like one of the most, I'm a, I love that poster. I'm like, I don't know. I haven't. That's, I can see why people do that style a lot. That's a lot of fun to do. I think maybe we could have done something a little bit more interesting with the chair, uh, but otherwise I think I got pretty much everything out of it that I wanted to. Um, I really like the little logos at the bottom there. The blocks of text are really nice and it just gave across that overall vibe, but also a little bit of a spin on it, I think maybe a little bit of an Elliot twist, who knows? Speaking of designs that I'm happy with, here are some designs from last week's challenge that I would love to show you. Last week's challenge was, of course, to make some album artwork for a commenter on that video. Uh, and you guys absolutely killed it. And I'm so, so proud. So enjoy some of my faves that I found on the hashtag design chef hashtag. Great job, everyone. You're awesome. So that's it for today's Design Chef. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have been designing along, make sure to post using hashtag Design Chef on any social media so we can all see it um, as we'd love to see these cool posters that you guys have come up with, I'm sure. And also Design Chef Season 7 has officially started over on my Twitch channel. So if you would like to be there for the live experience, it is on every Friday at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time or every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time that's how it works. Also, if you'd like to own a little piece of Elliot in your home, then check out my print store at elliothasacoolstore.com. That is where my prints are. You can buy them there. Thank you to everyone who's bought one. Uh, much, it's really cool. I'm glad you like the prints. I also sell phone cases. I have my own case to fire collection uh, that you can get. Have a look at this one. This is the one that I use. Nice and simple. Nice. And I think that's enough plugging for today. Unless you want to follow me on like Twitter and stuff. I got some funny TikToks as well. But thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you do enjoy the series. Let me know if you do. Uh, and there'll be many more design chefs coming weekly for the indefinite future. So thank you so much for watching. Good on you for designing. And uh, keep making those logos bigger. Am I right? Bye.